morning children and welcome back to the digital classroom of Vikram Juneja a very happy new year to you all I hope uh, the winter vacation was quite refreshing for you we are left with two short stories in our syllabus one is a face in the dark and the other one is an angel in disguise in my today's video I'm going to deal with a face in the dark by Ruskin Bond we will be doing the introduction to the author, the introduction to the story, as well as uh, the explanation of the text of the story. Uh, this next video will be the concluding video in which I will teach you the theme, the title justification and the critical analysis of the story. So let's begin with the story, A Face in the Dark. We uh, discuss about the author to start with. Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. He is a prolific writer whose works are popular with adults and children. He was born in Kasoli, Himachal Pradesh. He did his schooling in Shimla. He has written several short stories and novels. He was awarded the Padam Shri and Padam Bhushan. In the story of Face in the Dark, Ruskin Bond, Pichisek Hills, he has related a suspense incident set in the Pichasek Hills around Shimla. His fascination with the paranormal finds expression in this tale. He has made use of skillful elements for a horror story. The story has an equal amount of surprise, suspense and mystery to explore humanity's collective fascination with the dark. The story is based in Shimla as I told you and describes a thrilling experience. When we think of Shimla, we are reminded of beautiful and fascinating mountains and hills with scenic beauty. It is one of the best hill stations in India. Such places are renowned for their scenic appearances and stories and tales related to paranormal incidents. The story is a description of one such incident. Through the story, the author asserts that even powerful people and non-believers of evil spirits go blank when confronted by strange and horrible situations. The story is set on a windy night when Mr. Oliver, an Anglo-Indian teacher, is on his way back to school late one night. He takes a little detour and chooses to walk through the pine forest on his way back to the school after an evening at Shimla Bazaar. He encounters a boy and his experience turns out to be one where there is no escape for Mr. O. So children, this was with regard to the introduction to the author and introduction to the story of Face in the Dark. Now we are going to deal with the text explanation. Now I'll read the text and explain it to you. Mr. Oliver, an Anglo-Indian teacher, was returning to his school late one night on the outskirts of the hill station of Shimla. From before Kipling's time, the school had been run on English public school lines and the boys, most of them from wealthy Indian families, wore blazers, caps and ties. Life magazine, in a feature on India, had once called it the Eton of the East. Mr. Oliver had been teaching in the school for several years. The Shimla Bazaar with its cinemas and restaurants was about three miles from the school and Mr. Oliver, a bachelor, usually strolled in into the town in the evening, returning after dark, when he would take a shortcut through the pine forest. Now you see children, Mr. Oliver, who is the protagonist of the story, he is an Anglo-Indian teacher and... Uh, he was returned. Now, this story starts, the, the setting of the story is that he's returning one late night uh, from on the outskirts uh, to his school, which is on the outskirts of the hill station of Shimla. Uh, now, if you talk about this particular school, this school actually runs on English public schools li school lines and the Life magazine has actually named it after the school uh, in England and has called it the Eton of the East. Mr. Oliver has been teaching in the school for several years and this school has uh, its all boys school where the boys, uh, wear, uh, they are from the wealthy Indian families and they wore blazers, caps and ties. 
Now, uh, Mr. Oliver used to stroll uh, uh, down to that particular bazaar of Shimla, which was three miles away from his school. Uh, this bazaar had cinemas and restaurants and Mr. Oliver, who was a bachelor, he usually, uh, usually strolled into the town in the evening and he would actually take a shortcut while returning. He would actually take a shortcut through the pine forest. Now, moving further, when there was a strong wind, the pine trees made sad, eerie sounds that kept most people to the main road. road. But Mr. Oliver was not a nervous or imaginative man. He carried a torch and its gleam, the batteries were running down, moved fitfully down the narrow forest path. When its flickering, flickering light fell in the figure of a boy who was sitting alone on a rock, Mr. Oliver stopped. Boys were not supposed to be out after dark. What are you doing out here, boy? asked Mr. Oliver sharply, moving closer so that he could recognize the miscreant. But even as he approached the boy, Mr. Oliver sensed that, sensed that something was wrong. The boy appeared to be crying. His head hung down. He held his face in his hands and his body shook convulsively. It was a strange, soundless weeping and Mr. Oliver felt distinctly uneasy. If you see, uh, there was this strong wind which was blowing that particular night when Mr. Oliver was returning through that pine forest to his school. And that uh, the, the when the wind would blow, uh, the the trees, uh, the, the 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 branches, the uh, the leaves of the trees would actually flutter, and create a lot of eerie or mysterious sound. And people, of course, would actually take the main road, uh, just to avoid such eerie and mysterious sounds there. But Mr. Oliver was unlike those people, the other people of Shimla. He was not an imaginative man. He was not a nervous man. He was kind of a rational scientist. He had a scientific approach and uh, he would walk through that forest. He would not be frightened. He would not be afraid. He carried a, uh, a torch with him. Of course, the batteries of the to torch were running out, running down. And uh, he used to actually carry the, the torch with in his hand. When one, all of a sudden, the flickering light of the torch fell on the figure of a boy who was sitting on a rock there all alone. Uh, the boys of the school were not supposed to be out after dark, but then this boy was out. So Mr. Oliver thought that this boy was uh, a miscreant uh, who was breaking the school rule and was out. So he asked the boy, what are you doing out here, boy? And he moved closer to try and recognize that person, that boy. But even as he approached, he sensed that there was something wrong because the boy was weeping, but there was no sound actually of the weeping. His body was shaking because he was crying. His head was hung down and he held his face in his hands. His body was, as I told you, shaking convulsively. It was very strange kind of a weeping, a very soundless kind of a weep weeping, which made Mr. Oliver become very uneasy. Mr. Oliver asked another question from the boy. He said, well, what's the matter? He asked, his anger giving way to concern. What are you crying for? The boy would not answer or look up. His body continued to be racked with silent sobbing. Come on, boy, you shouldn't be out here at this hour. Tell me the trouble. Look up. The boy looked up. He took his hands from his face and looked up at his teacher. The light from Mr. Oliver's torch fell on the boy's face, if you could call it a face. Now, Mr. Oliver approached the boy again and he asked him as to what the matter was and why he was sitting there, why he was crying. Uh, earlier, Mr. Oliver was a little angry at him for he was breaking the rule. He thought he was breaking the rule. But when he uh, uh, realized that the boy was crying, it actually the anger gave way to concern. Uh, the boy continued to be uh, uh, to, to cry. Mr. Oliver checked with the boy. He said, uh, Tell me the trouble, he asked him. Tell me the trouble, look up. The boy looked up. Uh, when Mr. Oliver actually uh, saw him through the light of the torch, when it fell on the boy's face, Mr. Oliver could see that the boy had no face at all, if you could call it a face. He had no eyes. He had no ears, nose or mouth. It was just a round, smooth head with a school cap on the top of it. And that's where the story should end. But for Mr. Oliver, it did not end here. So when Mr. Oliver looked at the boy, he could see that the boy had a face which had no features on it. It had no nose, it had no eyes, it had no ears, it had no mouth at all. It was just a round, smooth head. Mr. Oliver was frightened, of course, and the, the author Ruskin Bond says that the story for Mr. Oliver should have ended there, but then it did not end there. 
The torch fell from his trembling hand. He turned and scrambled down the path, running blindly through the trees and calling for help. He was still running towards the school buildings when he saw a lantern swinging in the middle of the path. Mr. Oliver stumbled up to the watchman, gasping for breath. What is it, Sahib? asked the watchman. Has there been an accident? Why are you running? Now, uh, when he saw this boy without features on his face, Mr. Oliver, of course, was very frightened. His hands started trembling and the torch fell from his trembling hands. He started running down the path. Uh, through the trees, actually, he started calling for help. And uh, while he was running towards the school building, uh, he saw a lantern which was like kind of looking like swinging in the air. Uh, he stumbled up to the watchman and uh, the watchman asked him as to what is it, Sahib? Uh, and uh, is there any accident? Have you seen any accident that you're so frightened? Why are you running? Mr. Oliver said, I have seen something. I've seen something very horrible. A boy weeping in the forest and he had no face. To which uh, the watchman replied, uh, he had no face, Sahib. And uh, Mr. Oliver explained it further. He said, yeah, of course, he had no face. Yes, he had no face. He had no eyes, nose, mouth, nothing. Uh, the watchman said, do you mean it was like this, Sahib? Asked the watchman and raised the lamp to his own face. The watchman had no eyes, no ears, no features at all. Not even eye, an eyebrow. And that's when the wind blew the lamp out. So the watchman, when he uh, raised his lantern up to his face and the light of the lantern fell on his face, Mr. Oliver could realize that the watchman also had no eyes, no nose, no ears, no features at all on his face. And then the wind blew and it, uh, it, uh, the lamp actually was blown out in the, in the wind. And that's where the story ended. Mr. Oliver uh, must have fainted. He must have run away from there. So it's an open-ended story. You do not know what exactly happened to Mr. Oliver. But of course, what happened was pretty much clear that a rational human being had to believe something which was supernatural. Okay. So children, this was uh, with regard to the explanation of the text of the story, A Face in the Dark by Ruskin Bond. Uh, with this, we come to the end of the story. In my next video, as I told you earlier, I'm going to deal with the theme, the title justification and the critical analysis of the story. I'll also attach a worksheet with uh, the second video of mine. And I'll expect you to attempt that worksheet in your fair literature and English notebooks. Uh, with this, I come to the end. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. God bless you all. Take care.